Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. We had a PCP movie night tonight, and also PCP movie night, Horror Fest, Dawn of the Dead. That's right everybody, Pop Culture Philosophers, PCP movie night. We watched Dawn of the Dead, the 1978 classic, starting Horror Fest off right with George A. Romero. God rest his soul, right? George A. Romero was a, a visionary filmmaker that created the zombie film. We just watched Night of the Living Dead, and now we've watched Dawn of the Dead. I love this film. I, it's, so many people love this film. It's great. It's funny. It's scary. It's got great characterization, really good social commentary amazing stuff. Would you expect anything less from George Romero? No, you would not. And you won't expect anything less from us. We are the Pop Culture Philosophers. This is... John Hammertime Holsch. And this is... Brooks. Like I said, I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups. Let's talk about Dawn of the Dead. So Brooks, on the rewatch, because this is a movie we watched a few times before, what'd you think about it? How'd it hold up? Well, I mean, it, it, it held, it's always held up for me. I mean... I've always felt pretty much the same whenever I watched it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a good solid movie. I mean, a lot like, you know, Night of the Living Dead. It's one I can watch pretty much any time. Absolutely. You can watch it any time. I remember, like, one of the first times I ever saw this movie, they were playing it late at night on Cinemax, and our buddy George. George is like, he called me up. We lived right across the hall from each other in an apartment building, and he goes, you got to come over here and watch this movie. It was, it's, it's, it's gross. They're like literally eating the insides of people. And now, George A. Romero basically created the zombie movie with Night of the Living Dead. But Dawn of the Dead really, even, Night established a lot of the, the lore. Shoot them in the head, they, they rise from a bite or after they're dead. But Dawn of the Dead really established that whole gore aspect. There's some gore in Night of the Living Dead. Especially for 1968, a lot. But in 78, 10 years later, they're ripping intestines out. They're eating like organs. And it's in night, but it is so just it's in, a lot more in, in your face. full color yeah, right in your face. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Accentuated by George A. Romero's documentarian type style of filmmaking. It's an interesting thing. So George A. Romero did Night of the Living Dead and tried to stay away from zombie movies from that point on. Didn't really want to do another zombie movie. Had a lot of offers. And then one day an offer came from Dario Argento, which is the coolest name in the entertainment industry, absolutely. Dario Argento, famed Italian horror and giallo director, um, hollered at um, George A. Romero, put him up in Rome, let him write the script, said, I want another zombie movie from you. Let's do it together. They did it. It's amazing. Goblin does the soundtrack. It's a brilliant soundtrack. Great score. For the most Absolutely. part. Absolutely. Speaking of great score for the most part, Hammer Time, what'd you think about the movie on the rewatch? I enjoyed it. I think it's a, I think it's a cool film. I've seen it maybe two times before, but I also get certain parts confused with the remake. Really, the only, Zack thing, Snyder, yeah, okay. the only thing the Zack Snyder film has anything to do is obviously the same title, and they both end up in a mall, but in they mall, are yeah. completely different films. Uh, Dawn of the Dead really feels like, the, the remake really feels like this is these people experiencing the horror of zombies for the first time, they don't know what's going on, yeah. when the original is a really is a sequel to Night of the Living Dead. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think they really do follow up the events, or they reference the events. Um, oh yes. yes, I think it's. I think it holds up really well. The, I think the effects are good, especially since in night you do see them like, oh, I'm hitting somebody and they're being killed, but you, it's off screen, almost like a TV yeah. program. Yeah, and you, you see the gore afterwards, yeah, like the bullet blood wound, or whatever. But in this one, you see. In this one, you see they gave it to you, and maybe that's because of Savini, but they give you the they. You get to see. And it's, and it's graphic. Heads explode. It's one of the first yeah. things you see in the movie is the head explode. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned his name, Tom Savini. This is the first movie with Tom Savini doing the makeup. And horror movies will never be the same from this point forward, right? Oh, right? Yeah. Never. And he did an exceptional job on the makeup in this, and I love it. I love the effects. I think he does a better job on Day of the Dead. And of course, his protégés went on to make GNB. They do Walking Dead. Big deal, right? This all starts with Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead is amazing. We love this. And 
And I just love this so this movie so amazing. Like I mean, oh my god, we're just gushing over this because it's just it's groundbreaking. Gushing with blood. Gushing with blood. It's groundbreaking. It's revolutionary. It's just it's ahead of its time. And we're about to get into the themes of the movie. But first, real quick, I would say, is there any zombie in the movie in particular that stands out to you? Hammer time, Holstein. I would say zombie that stand out. Well. Ones we probably you that you didn't see in the previous films is they, they you got the kid that transforms. Yes. At the beginning of this, you have the two kids. Two kids. And yes. that is kind of alarming. To this. I think the first time. And you he's got to mow him down. Peter's yeah, got to mow him down. It's the first time you ever see zombie kids, and they're like innocent little kids. They're not yes. even like they're not even like in their you know teens. They're like little kids. Yeah. So that's kind of disturbing. But you something you pointed out, and it is great when I go back and watch it is the uh, when the pilot turns. Just his animation. Oh, yeah, when Steven turns. Yeah, his animation is pretty fantastic. If you watch He's him, pretty committed yeah, to it. Look at his right ankle, and it's like, how did you not break your foot walking like that, homie? But seriously, when Steven becomes a zombie at the end of the film, so good. And Ken Forey, who plays Peter in the movie, he's one of my favorite actors in this movie. I think he does a great performance. He has the greatest dialogue. When there is no more room left in hell, the dead shall walk the earth. He's so much important stuff. This movie says so many important things. But before we get to that, any zombies in this movie that stand out to you? To me, real quick, um, of course, the one from the, the cover with, with that or whatever. But I love the one that steps up into the helicopter blades. And his top of his head just gets wiped out. I love that. that. Anything else stand, stand out to you, zombie-wise? Uh, the, the Buddhist monk zombie. Uh, the, the Harry Krishna. Yeah. yeah. They had the tambourine. And yeah. Yeah. And the, the glasses. One of the best things about Romero movies, the Romero zombie movies especially, are that like these zombies, they're just normal people out of nowhere. Like like in some of the movies, like Day of the Dead, there's a clown who is a zombie. There are football players, and just these are people that have obviously just in the middle of their day, and they become zombies. Right. So thematically, this movie I guess says, and a, 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 a lot of uh, night, a lot of them are just in their underwear. <laughs> yes, right. Um, because that's what would happen, especially na or naked. You know, there's during naked the woman. night of the leaving Shirt, dead, shirtless zombie, the leaving dead, the leaving <laughs> dead. So thematically, this movie speaks a lot. George A. Romero does a lot of social commentary in his zombie films, especially. Obviously, zombies in a mall. I mean, does it get more blatant than that? Zombies in a mall, 1978. We're talking about consumerism culture, absolutely, and a whole lot of other things. There's a there's a lot in here about a little bit about repression of women because the the character I can't remember the character's name, but the woman she gets pregnant, she feels like she's left out. Um, they're hating on her and all this stuff, and she's having this weird weird relationship with Stephen, and they they use her pregnancy to kind of like explore some things there, but I don't really think they got to go as deep as they wanted to. Ken Forey's Peter is an amazing character. Great characters that speak a lot. What do you think about some of the themes in this movie, Brooks? Well, uh, I think probably the main theme is just like, you know, survival by any means. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, or how desensitized like, these people yeah, become. Well, the mall is like, if you were planning to survive, I mean, that's the place. Even though know, there is the danger of the zombies. But these guys, they've kind of figured out how the zombies work. So yeah. they can they can work around the zombies and get what they need. So the mall isn't as dangerous to them, like because you know they know how to manipulate the zombies to a certain extent. Absolutely, it's like they get used to it. Yeah, right. It's and like they learn how to survive by you know controlling their situation. And they almost take it for granted, and then it all falls apart. Not because of the zombies, but because. Of the the intruders, the looters, yeah. the biker gang, the other people like that the come The bikers in. are really like they really know how to deal with the zombies because I mean to a point. Go, I mean they they're kind of their, like provoking yeah, them though. Yeah, they go through there and you kind of feel sorry for the zombies for a while because they're just like <laughs> yes. throwing pies in their faces and just being dicks. But then the bikers yeah, get there. Like the zombies are like, oh, we can just gang up on them. And Absolutely. In Night Living Dead, they spoke a lot about how they d wouldn't work together. They couldn't survive. In this movie, they do work together. And they do survive because of it. However, other people get in the way of that, right? And they even would have been fine in this movie had they just let it all just go. Like Peter tells Stephen, they will ransack the place and they'll leave. They'll leave. But Peter's, I mean, Stephen's like, no, we took this place. He starts taking a pride of ownership 
of something that they didn't actually own, right? They're just, they themselves are looters and squatters, right? So it's like this whole idea, and I just, I think it's so cool, so great. Plus the idea of consumerism, why are they here? Why do they come here to this mall? And I love it, and, and they don't even really understand what it is, and they're like, why are they here? It's like, this was an important place to them. And it really resonates, really, especially malls were big back in the 70s, but they really blew up in the 80s and early 90s with like crazy arcades and bigger department stores and bigger stores and pretzel places and cookie places and stuff oh, like that, right? All the pretzel right? places, the downfall of the mall. And shoe oh, stores. absolutely. And shoe stores, dude. Okay, so <laughs> we were having a lot of fun, at least John and I. Brooks was just kind of trying to pay attention to the movie, but John and I were paying attention to the stores in the mall. So this whole thing about pennies that we researched, JC Pennies and their logo and Lots of cool stuff. George A. Romero apparently knew someone who owned this mall. That's where the idea came from. They knew they could do it there cheaply. Great stuff. And Love these are it. real legitimate stores. Absolutely. Speaking of real and legitimate, John is neither of those. However, we're going to ask him about the themes of this movie. Well, I think you, you kind of, well, they did talk about them going to the mall and why they would gravitate to the mall, even there were zombies. You're talking about like things they held on to or they held dear. So there's that whole consumerism. In fact, they go, I mean, even our the main people go to the damn mall. Yeah. Um, it is not a bad place to hold up, I guess, if there's a zombie apocalypse. Oh, it'd be great, They're Also, yeah. they talk a lot about the greed because when the bikers came, they were just there to take and pillage and take from the mall. They didn't look like they were actually there for holding they up. Weren't, they weren't there even trying yeah, to get, they like, were taking like stuff. rational supplies yeah. or anything. And even though it looked like the world ended, both the bikers and the main people robbed that bank. Taking money. Taking yeah, gold, it doesn't even look like money jewelry. would be good at this point in time. Like the, the the dollar would not be valuable because other things. There's other commodities. Yeah. Uh, ammunition, food, other things, and yet they still took this money for what reason? And then they didn't obviously take it with them when they had to escape the mall. Yeah. Spoiler alerts: They may or may not escape the mall. So for of them, how long? Not all of them. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, that's the themes I drew for. Some of the themes oh, were very absolutely. apparent. But I think the greed thing plays a lot into that as well. Yeah, I love this movie. We love this movie. We think it's amazing. We want to know what you think about this movie and some of its themes. Let us know in the comments down below. We love talking to you guys in the comments down below about movies. So please do let us know. Thank you for checking out the video. Please do like, share, and subscribe. We do these things a lot, especially during Halloween time. It's Horror Fest. We are getting ready. We got a whole lot more excitement coming up like Toby Hooper's Poltergeist possibly being next we shall see but we're pretty sure that's next right another great horror artist that we lost this year thank you guys for rocking with us checking out the video check us out at popculturephilosophers.com we got a lot of movie reviews comic book reviews top five list blogs a whole lot more including our podcast speaking of george a romero we got a 70s horror movie podcast out right now or about to be out i have no idea what day it is right now when you are watching this but check it out at popculturephilosophers.com i'm rockin robbie billups this is john hammertown Holsch. and this is Brooks. we are the pop culture philosophers thanks for joining the pcp army check us out on patreon as well patreon.com slash pcp thanks for rocking with us deuces deuces dawn of the dead night day survival diary land Say world, diarrhea? World, oh, world of the dead. Diarrhea. I have been on diarrhea of the dead. Yeah, I said sugar smacks. Yeah. Sugar smacks, honey grams, life. Shaun of the Dead, is that a Romero film? How, uh, how bold to be a serial company and be like, we're life. <laughs>